Attention, the IRS is raising a new army of agents and they are coming for you. Under the Inflation Reduction Act, which was just passed and was signed into law, the IRS was given $80 billion in new funds. Much of this new funding will be used to hire tens of thousands of IRS agents. In fact, about 45 billion of the IRS's new funding will be used to boost tax enforcement and it's estimated that the IRS could hire as many as 87,000 new IRS agents. What this means is that it has officially become time to start worrying about audits. The Biden administration claimed that the IRS would not perform any new audits on people making less than $400,000 per year. But Republicans tried to get this claim from Biden included in the law in the form of an amendment to the bill. But every single Democratic senator voted against this amendment, and thus the amendment was rejected. So even though the Biden administration claims that the new IRS agents will only be going after the fat cats making over $400,000 a year, the Democrats prevented this from being a part of the law, which many would say is quite suspicious. So of course, in this video, I'm gonna be going over everything you need to know about the IRS's new army of agents. I'm gonna tell you what they're likely going to be doing. And most importantly, I'm gonna explain how you can prepare yourself and protect yourself from the IRS. Make sure you stay until the end of this video because I'm going to be giving away one golden nugget of information in regards to this entire situation. So let's dive in. First thing is first, why is the IRS hiring more agents? With the new funding from the Inflation Reduction Act, the IRS could more than double the size of its staff. There are a number of theories about why the IRS is adding more agents and rapidly boosting its staff numbers. The first theory is that the government just wants to use the additional agents to increase revenue in order to help it deal with the deficit and the national debt, which are both getting significantly worse over time. The next theory is that the government is hiring additional agents to help deal with cryptocurrency users and people who could be evading taxes for digital currencies. I mean, after all, cryptocurrencies have become significantly more popular in the last five to 10 years. And in fact, it is estimated that over 34 million people in the United States own cryptocurrency right now. Cryptocurrencies are, by their very nature, more secretive and hard to monitor by the government. It's possible that the IRS is not too happy about that and is responding with more audits and enforcement agents. Another theory is that because inflation is rising so fast and because the prices for essential items like housing, food, gasoline, and heating oil are all rising significantly faster than the wages that we're getting paid, the IRS might be worried that many people will simply choose not to pay their taxes next spring because they are struggling financially. And finally, the fourth theory is that perhaps the government has just had enough of rich people evading taxes and now it is fighting back finally. But regardless of whether it was just one of these things or a combination of them that motivated the government to increase the size of the IRS, the increase is definitely happening right now. So what exactly are the new agents likely going to do? According to the IRS website itself, new special agents must be able to legally carry a firearm and if necessary, have to be willing to use deadly force. This post from the IRS has raised a lot of eyebrows and the IRS has since removed the line about carrying a weapon and using deadly force. But it still makes you wonder, like what exactly are the new IRS agents gonna be doing that the IRS thought it had to list a willingness to use deadly force in its original job posting online? According to Bloomberg, many tens of thousands of new employees that the IRS will be hiring are simply replacements for people who will be retiring. A lot of the new employees will also be customer service people who will simply answer phone calls and computer programmers who will maintain the IRS's complicated computer systems that they like to use. However, it is true that the IRS is also planning to increase the amount of audits that it carries out on the American public. In fact, one taxpayer, his name is Michael Garrison, a senior partner of the Genova accounting firm, said he expects the audit rates to increase significantly around 2026 or around 2027 after the IRS has successfully trained all of the new employees it intends to add in the next few years. Now, speaking about all of these new IRS agents, Senate Finance Committee Chairman Ron Wyden said, it's unbelievable that we even need to say this, but there are not going to be 87,000 armed IRS agents going door to door with assault weapons. This is funding for answering phone calls and upgrading computer systems. But many Republican politicians have expressed their beliefs that the Democrats are lying about their true goals with the hiring of the 87,000 employees. For example, in regards to the situation, Kevin McCarthy, the top Republican in the House of Representatives has said, 
Democrats in Washington plan to hire an army of 87,000 IRS agents so that they can audit more Americans like you. That's more than the entire population of Joe Biden's hometown of Scranton, Pennsylvania. If this is true, it would certainly reinforce the idea that the IRS is building an army. So it seems that the Republicans and the Democrats disagree about what exactly the new IRS agents are going to do. However, what is definitely true is that the Congressional Budget Office has predicated that the additional funding to the IRS and subsequent hiring of tens of thousands of new staff members would increase revenue to the federal government by $204 billion over 10 years. The only way that this would be possible is with a dramatic increase in audits. So, most likely you can expect to see a surge in IRS audits over the next decade, which means that you need to be more prepared. Next question, how do you prepare yourself for the increase in audits? Guys, the first thing I'm going to say about getting prepared is that it is always, always, always helps to work with a tax professional. Generally speaking, tax professionals just have a much better understanding of the complexities and the complications of the United States tax code than the average person. This means that they can spot things that you might not be able to see in your tax returns that could be red flags for an IRS audit. If your tax returns have even one red flag, then it can dramatically increase the chances of you being audited. So if you wanna decrease your chances of being audited as much as possible, then I strongly recommend first and foremost that you work with a high quality tax professional who can carefully go over your returns with a fine tooth comb. With that being said, there are many things that you can do by yourself just to reduce your audit risk. For example, here is a list of some of the top 10 audit triggers for tax returns. You should be aware of all of these and try to hedge yourself against the risks associated with them as much as possible. Number one, making a lot of money. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. <laughs> About 50% of all audits that happen every year are for people making over $1 million per year. So if you're making a lot of money, it does increase your audit risk. And let's be honest, this makes sense because the IRS notices mistakes on the tax returns of wealthy people. It can usually collect more in owed tax and fines for people who are making more. So if you are already a high net worth individual or if you make over a million dollars per year, your chances of being audited are already higher than the normal average person. Number two, math errors. Some tax returns have math errors. Usually these are unintentional, but sometimes they are intentional and people hope that the IRS won't notice. But the IRS is very good at catching math errors. They are, they have computer systems. If it does find that you have some math errors on your tax returns, this can be a trigger for an audit and your tax return gets set aside. So before you submit your tax returns, go over them carefully to make sure that there are no math errors. Better yet, use tax preparation software that does the math automatically for you so you can't make a mistake. Number three, you run a very cash heavy business. Cash heavy businesses are the magnet for the IRS. This is because the IRS knows it's all too easy for a cash heavy business owner to simply forget to declare portions of their cash as income. Cash businesses that are commonly targeted by the IRS for audits include laundry mats. Laundry mats are big cash heavy businesses, restaurants, big cash heavy businesses, convenience stores, beauty salons, and car washes. So if you own one of any of these types of businesses, please be aware that your income needs to be tracked and the IRS has a very tight eye on cash heavy businesses. So don't forget about any income that comes into your business as cash. Number four, having a large change in income or expenses. Both large changes in income and expenses is a signal to the IRS that something dramatic has happened to you within this past year. So this alone can, can put a little curiosity in the IRS's eyes around what's going on. For example, let's just say you were making $100,000 a year ago or two years ago, and now this year you're making $4 million. This can definitely get the attention of the IRS. Now, number five is consistently losing money. Most businesses that consistently lose money are not suitable in the long term. So if the IRS notices that you keep claiming that your business is losing money every year, then this can cause an auditor to audit your business to determine what the nature is of your business. Is your business legitimate or is it a hobby? Number six, filing incomplete tax returns. A lot of people file incomplete tax returns because they don't think that the IRS will notice. But even if all you're missing is your signature, there's a good chance the IRS will catch it and call you out for it with a letter to explain things. So double check to make sure you filled out your tax returns completely before submitting them. Number seven, mixing personal and business expenses. The more extravagant your expenses are and the less related to your business that they are or that they seem, the more a trigger is likely to happen with the IRS. Famous millionaire and playboy 
Dan Blazarian, I talk about him all the time, was recently accused for claiming over $800,000 in personal expenses as business expenses. If it can happen to him, it can happen to you too. So be careful what you try to deduct as business expenses and please make sure it truly is an expense related to your business or you can find yourself to be in a little bit of trouble. Taking the home office deduction. The home office deduction is a deduction that only applies to people who work from home. A lot of taxpayers who are W-2 taxpayers think that they work from home and that they can take a home office deduction when they don't have a business and use an office in their home exclusively and regularly for business when they don't have a business. The reason why this deduction can be a red flag for the IRS is because oftentimes people who claim the home office deduction do not actually qualify for it. Also, many people try to claim that there is a home office that's bigger than it actually is, and the expenses associated with the home office are higher than they actually are. Because the home office deduction often represents thousands of dollars, it is sometimes the one thing that the IRS chooses to commonly go for on Schedule C businesses, filing Schedule C. Most sole proprietors are required to fill out this form when reporting their income to the IRS. Unfortunately, people who file Schedule C's are just more likely to get audited. I talk about this all the time. This is because Schedule C's, they're a straightforward form that goes inside of your 1040 tax returns. It's very easy to see errors on a Schedule C. If you are one of the people who is required to file a Schedule C, then there's a much higher chance of you being audited versus someone who has a 1065 partnership return or an S Corp. It's just part of being a sole proprietor. Just make sure you keep all of your receipts for expenses and that you fill out your tax forms accurately. Now, last what I will say is using your car for business. A lot of people use their vehicle for business but do not fully understand all of the rules associated with the car related tax deductions. For example, for standard employees, commuting costs are not deductible, but many people still try to claim them because they used to be deductible previous to 2018. If you own your own business, such as a food truck, then many of the expenses associated with your truck will be deductible. So make sure you know for sure whether or not your car related expenses are deductible before you try to deduct them. Now, a word on cryptocurrencies. As mentioned previously, one of the main theories about why the IRS is adding tens of thousands of new employees is to crack down on people who are invading taxes with cryptocurrency. This means that if you own, invest, trade, or exchange cryptocurrencies, you need to be especially careful right now. Act returns are required to be filled out accurately under penalty or perjury. The IRS is now forcing every American taxpayer to answer the following questions related to cryptocurrencies. At any time during 2022, did you receive, sell, or exchange, or otherwise dispose of any financial interest in any virtual cryptocurrencies? It's on the tax return, this question. This question is so important to answer correctly, and if you do not answer this correctly, the consequences can be steep. So people lie on this question and say no, even if they do have cryptocurrency in the cryptoverse, right, in their, in their ledgers, they lie on their tax returns. Guys, cryptocurrencies are encrypted and if the IRS cannot track them or enforce taxation for them, they will eventually figure out a way to do so. This is part of the reason why the IRS is hiring more IRS agents. The government is requiring more and more reporting and compliance for companies in the crypto space, such as large exchanges like Coinbase. What this means is that even if you lie to the government about something like selling your Bitcoin at a profit, there's a very good chance, and I'm gonna be honest with you, there's a very good chance that the IRS will be able to tell that you lied and will come after you as a result. $45 billion of the $80 billion that the IRS is getting in new funding from the Inflation Reduction Act is specifically earmarked for ramping up tax enforcement. So expect at least some of this new funding to go directly towards like cryptocurrency tax enforcement. Unless you simply buy, hold cryptocurrency and never sell them or exchange them, then expect that the majority of your transactions with cryptocurrency are taxable events. And this is true if you are making a profit currently right now. So don't just assume that the IRS won't catch you just because you're doing cryptocurrency on the blockchain. The IRS catches everybody, guys, okay? And this is coming from somebody who has seen a lot of audits. Now, my question to you is, is could the IRS's expansion fall through? Right now, Democrats are in control of the House in the White House. However, the midterm elections are coming up in just a few months. Republicans and Democrats have been split along party lines about the funding for the expansion of the IRS. This means that if the Republicans take back the House, then they could potentially vote to overturn the funding for the expansion for the IRS. Now, many people believe that this will happen. In fact, Senate Republican campaign chairman Rick Scott from Florida even went as far as to send an open letter to job seekers warning them not to take new jobs with the IRS. 
This is because he believes that Republicans will take back the House this fall and will defund the new IRS jobs. Speaking about this issue, Rick Scott said that the Biden administration will use the Inflation Reduction Act to build an IRS super police force to audit and investigate ordinary Americans. Scott warned IRS job seekers saying this, the IRS is making it very clear that you not only need to be ready to audit and investigate your fellow hardworking Americans, your neighbors and your friends, you need to be ready and to use the IRS's words willing to kill them. It would appear that the IRS's expansion is turning into quite the hot button issue right now. And I expect this issue to continue to be heavily debated over the coming months and years. But even if there is a decent chance that the Republicans take back the House and thus have more control over Congress next year, it does not necessarily mean that the funding for the IRS expansion will automatically be removed. So please do not count on it. If you would like to increase your tax knowledge in order to reduce your chances of being audited in the coming years, then feel free to join my live training I have below. You can find the link to the training in the description. Okay, now we've made it to the end of this video. As promised, I wanna give you guys one golden piece of tax wisdom that you can walk away from that's gonna help you with this whole IRS expansion. The wisdom is in regards to the cryptocurrency mining. Guys, if you received cryptocurrency in the form of cryptocurrency mining, this is a taxable event. In fact, it is actually considered taxable income. So don't expect not to pay any taxes on cryptocurrencies you own from mining. Now, that's gonna be all for this video. I wanna make sure that you guys have a chance to click on the description link below to join our free training. If you would like to grow your investments and use those investments to offset your ordinary income, I look forward to seeing you in the live training. That's it for today's video. I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Cheers.